Hey there, all you weather geeks and weather nerds out there. It is uh, Tuesday evening. I wish it was Wednesday, but I don't want to get ahead of myself here. It's only Tuesday. Uh, we are approaching a changeable period weather-wise, and we're going to talk about that on Weather for Weather Geeks this evening, all the ups and downs. Over the next seven days, we're going to talk about the potential severe weather as we head into the upcoming weekend and some really, really steamy weather coming our way at the end of the work. We wanted to start out actually showing you a few pictures shared with us last evening. You can share weather pictures with us multiple ways, including email, weatherpics, P-I-C-S, at WFMJ.com. Uh, you can always tag us on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram as well. You can actually submit uh, the pictures right on the Storm Tracker 21 app. That's one of the easiest ways to do it. Just snap the picture with your phone and then open the app and you can send it our way that, uh, through that method. And uh, a few of these pictures were last night really, really good. We had some great rainbows last evening. Uh, thanks to Debbie who shot this. Uh, she said she followed this rainbow from uh, Canfield all the way to Poland along 224. By the way, here's my Instagram, Eric WFMJ. Uh, follow the Storm Tracker 21 Instagram account for more great weather pictures. Uh, we had a, a few more. Let me actually back up and I want to show you a few more before we move on. Let's, uh, yeah, let's show you this one. This was uh, Mamatis clouds, those kind of pouchy clouds that uh, oftentimes are on the underside of an anvil, uh, a thunderstorm anvil cloud. A lot of times you see these as a storm is pushing away from the area. And it's really cool when we get these at around sunset, when, or at least when the sun is low in the sky, it illuminates the bottom of these uh, clouds. And yeah, these pouchy Mamatis clouds, indicative of a lot of instability in the atmosphere, a lot of rising and falling motion. And you get uh, kind of that, uh, pouchy pattern uh, as a result. And well, finally, this one was really cool. Uh, thanks to Kelly from Austintown. Lightning and a rainbow all in one shot here from yesterday evening. Some very photogenic stuff out there last uh, uh, about 24 hours ago, I should say. Now, a high resolution satellite picture of the region today. You can see how pretty nice and green the landscape is. And of course, things were greening up eight or nine days ago, but compare this to May the 9th. So that was eight days ago, and here we go right here. You can see it's just not as green as emerald green on this uh, same view on a crystal clear day eight days ago. So things have really greened up in a hurry around here. So, uh, spring is you know kind of in full swing at this point. Had some fair weather clouds out there this morning, but uh, bright and sunny for most of the afternoon. Cobalt blue skies. Always love this time of the year as everything's greening up and the foliage is fresh and green. And you contrast that with the deep blue hues of a clear sky on a day like today. It's why I love this time of the year. If, if I had to rank my favorite times of the year, kind of that period from Mother's Day to Father's Day, mid to late spring, that's my number one choice, followed you know, close second by uh, mid-fall, say mid to late September through the first half of October. That's a close second, but I would put this time of the year right at number one for me, and it's because of days like today. Now, it was cooler than average. You know, we should be at 71 at this time of the year, but we will uh, record a high at the airport today of only uh, in, uh, only temperatures in the uh, mid-60s. In fact, tonight with a clear sky for a lot of the night, it's going to be a pretty chilly night, probably our chilliest night until a few months from now, maybe late August, early September. Cold enough that in the uh, deeper valleys in north uh, northwestern and northern PA, southwestern New York, uh, there might be some patches of frost tomorrow morning. So the weather service in both Buffalo and Pittsburgh and Cleveland uh, did hoist some frost advisories from Crawford and Erie County, PA on east through the Bradford area. If you've ever been over to the Grand Canyon of PA, a uh, really scenic area in the kind of the middle of nowhere in northern PA, not far from the New York border. That's really uh, rural uh, terrain out there, and it's very lots of hills and valleys. And some of those real deep valleys, those crevices can get pretty cold on a night like tonight when we have dry air and a clear sky. So there could be some frost in those locations tomorrow morning. Now, in our viewing area, we have no frost advisories out, but I, I don't think there'll be frost in many locations. But I guess I wouldn't be totally shocked if in some of the coldest valleys, maybe a little patches of frost on some rooftops and things like that in Mercer, maybe Trumbull County uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, some backyard thermometers might read 36 or so, 37 in some of those really cold spots tomorrow morning. Most of us will stay in the uh, 40s. Nationwide look at the weather this evening. A little severe weather threat out here across the Corn Belt. Otherwise, not a lot of barn burners on the weather map tonight. Now, tomorrow is going to be a different day. Clouds will increase. Rain chances will increase as we go into the afternoon. Pretty good slug of rain for most of us. 
mid to late afternoon into early in the evening. The rain will then taper off. And then in the wake of this first front, clouds will break for plentiful sunshine Thursday and temperatures will bounce quickly up into the middle and upper 70s. And yeah, that's just the start of it. Thursday is warm, but downright hot on Friday. Now there might be a stray shower or even a rumble of thunder late Thursday night, first thing Friday morning along this second warm front. It's a low chance, but something that can't be ruled out. But uh, yeah, this air mass coming in, the hottest of the year so far. You know, looking back at the record books, uh, we if we did hit 90 on Friday, that would be the earliest springtime 90 degree temperature that we've seen around here in 60 years. It's been since 1962 since we've had an early season uh, 90 degree temperature this early in the season, I should say. That's not in our forecast right now. We have a forecast of 88 on Friday. Um, but if we were to hit 90 Friday, it would be very early in the season for that. All right, rainfall totals, pretty modest, nothing to write home about with our Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday night rain. The NAM is kind of an outlier right now. Most of our modeling is under half an inch. No worries with any sort of flooding around here. All right, quick update on the weekend situation. Mentioned this last evening that we'll be keeping a close eye on Saturday. This uh, next cold front will be a pretty strong one. Pretty decent push of cooler air running into all this building heat and humidity at the end of the week. Overall, our thinking hasn't changed a whole lot on Saturday. Uh, the front's probably a little bit slower than it looks like it would be 24 hours ago. Um, this may be more late in the day Saturday into Saturday night as opposed to Saturday afternoon. So we're starting to focus a little bit more on maybe very late afternoon into the evening, even into parts of the overnight, uh, Saturday into Saturday night, for the uh, potential for some heavy, gusty storms, possible severe weather. Is it a slam dunk that we have severe weather? No. In fact, the later that front arrives, if, it, if the model trends continue to be slower and slower, that would decrease the chances of severe weather because we'd get out of that favorable time of the day. Uh, if this were faster and coming through around early to mid-afternoon Saturday, that would definitely increase the severe weather chances, but if the, the front's slower and the best uh, ingredients don't really try to come together until sunset or after, then while severe weather couldn't be ruled out, it uh, would be a lower chance than if the front were to approach earlier in the day. And because of the slower uh, progress of the front, we uh, might have to allow for some residual showers into early Sunday morning, followed by a pretty decent cool down for a few days early next week. Now. You know, this uh, cool down is going to be modest. Uh, we're talking about temperatures in the 60s for a couple days, Sunday and Monday, but then we're back to the 70s, I think, for the uh, middle of next week and uh, probably even pushing 80 towards the end of next week. So, you know, we're getting into the time of the year that cool downs tend to be pretty brief and pretty modest. Averages continue to rise. We're, our averages are now in the lower 70s. And, you know, this time of the year, we'll get a cold front occasionally that knocks us back to the 60s, but usually just for a couple of days. That'll do it for Weather for Weather Geeks tonight. Thank you as always for watching. Let's do it again. Same time, same place on Wednesday.